Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. Now I could stand here and tell you stories all night from my own life about times when I had to press, but I'm just going to mention three things to you just so you can kind of identify and then you can kind of locate the own areas in your life right now that you're needing to press through because I can guarantee you that everybody in the building has something. Well, you know, Jesus didn't die for us so we could be halfway between two places. He didn't die for us so we could not exactly be a total mess or a failure anymore, but yet never really be victorious either. And a lot of people, I think, get stuck somewhere in the middle. And they've got too much of God to go on, to go back, but not enough of God to go on. And so it's very important to me that I do whatever part I can do with the calling on my life to help people be all that God wants them to be, to do all that God wants them to do, and to have all that God wants them to have. Now, we're very willing to have all that God wants us to have, but we have to also be willing to do all that He wants us to do and to be all that He wants us to be. Matter of fact, we don't even really need to concentrate on having all that he wants us to have because that's a byproduct of doing what he wants you to do and being what he wants you to be. And it does take pressing, pressing in, pressing on, pressing through things, pressing beyond things. And pressing is not something that anybody can do for you. It's something that you must do yourself. You can hear other people's testimonies of how they press through difficulties in their life. You can hear people with great, wonderful, valid ministries today talk about how they had to press through the, the lean years and the hard years and the years of misunderstanding. And that encourages you, but when it comes right down to it, every single person has to dig down deep within their own spirit, take hold of the hand of God and say, I will not quit, I will not give up, I will be all that you want me to be, do all that you want me to do, and have all that you want me to have. Can anybody say amen? amen? It does not glorify God when we are not victorious. It doesn't mean God loves us any less, but we are, so to speak, walking billboards for Christ. And when people see a life that's been transformed, especially like the girl was saying on the video earlier, where people knew her and they knew how she was and they knew the life that she lived, and then they see that kind of a radical transformation. That has to speak to people. So it's very important that we don't receive Christ and begin to just go to church and do a few religious things, but never really change and have victory in our life. Salvation is the most important thing But maturity, growing up in God, is also extremely important. When you're saved, God puts a smile on your face. When you grow up, you put a smile on God's face. Amen? All right. So to press means to press against your pressure. We all have pressure in life. There's no telling us what different people are going through in this building tonight. If we had the time to go around and take a survey, it would just be unbelievable to us some of the things that people right here in this place, as well as all of our friends watching by TV, are going through. But the good news is, is with God, we can go through. We don't have to get stuck somewhere in the middle, never get out of those places. So we need to not be disturbed about going through. You know, a lot of times you ask people, how are you? Well, I'm going through. Well, thank God you're going through. And you're not just stuck somewhere in a place that you're never going to get out of. How I many of you are going through something right now? All right. Well, I am too, if you just want to know the truth. So, <laughs> pressing into things and through things is a very important principle that we must understand. You know, I believe in the power of prayer, and I love to pray for people, but I'm going to be honest with you and tell you that you're not going to get every breakthrough you need having your pastor or some friend of yours that knows how to pray, pray for you. You're going to also have to add some pressing to that praying. And that means that 
Very often when someone prays for you, what God does is he gives you renewed strength. He gives you a new determination to do the part that you need to do. We're partners with God. He has a part and we have a part. And I like to say all the time, we can't do his part and he won't do our part. So we have to learn how this thing has worked. This thing works. And if we do it right, we're going to have victory in our lives. Wishing doesn't do much for us. We don't need wishbone, we need backbone. We need to stand up. We need to be the men and women of God that the Holy Spirit enables us to be. We need to not be afraid of trouble. We need to not be afraid of trials and tribulations. We need to not be afraid of hard times. We don't need to get wimpy if we have to wait a little while for our breakthrough. We just need to be a lot more determined. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will fill you this weekend with a holy determination and put a fire on the inside of your spirit so you will know that you know that you know that no matter how long it takes and no matter how hard it is, you are going to be all that God wants you to be. Amen? Wine is made by putting grapes through a press. Wine in the Bible often represents power. For example, there's a scripture in Matthew that says you cannot put new wine into old wineskins. Well, I think that was talking about the new birth, the new nature, the new creation. And the message to the people was, if you're going to live this new life, then you're going to have to get rid of old ways. Wine also represents power in the Bible in many places. And so you're not going to have any power in your life if you're not willing to press. Just like the grapes, if they weren't pressed, would never become grape juice or wine, we're never going to have power in our lives if we are not willing to press. When you press, you build spiritual muscles. When you have to use your faith, your faith becomes greater. When you need a miracle and you don't give up, you begin to see the faithfulness of God in your life, then the next time you need one, it's not doesn't require as much pressing for you to believe as it did the last time. When I'm talking about pressing, I'm not talking about pressing physically. I'm not talking about getting into works of the flesh and trying to make something happen in your own strength. I'm talking about a spiritual pressing on in God, where way down deep inside of you, you make your mind up, you make up your little spiritual mind that you're going to go all the way through with God. Is anybody here determined? Do you have your mind made up that you are going to go all the way through with God? It's a great desire of mine to stand before God on Judgment Day and say, I have finished the work that you have given me to do. I have finished what you have called me to do. I don't want to do a little of it or part of it. I want to finish everything that God has asked me to do and I would imagine that you feel the same way. Well, the past is like a magnet. It keeps trying to draw us back. But Jesus is always trying to draw us forward. In the Bible, it says that Jesus is coming back for a church without spot, blemish, or wrinkle. Well, you know how you get wrinkles out of your clothes? You press them. And so many times, God is allowing us to be pressed in our life by the pressure that's coming against us and he wants us to press back against it because believe it or not, that's what gets the wrinkles out of us. That's what helps us be the person that God wants us to be. Let's look at Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. I so much appreciate you all taking your time to come tonight and I'm proud of you that you would take time to come and and hear the Word of God, and I know that many of you have made arrangements to be here all weekend, and I just know that I know that I know that you will have a reward of spiritual fruit in your life from this investment of time. So congratulations to you for doing the right thing. There are, there are people who promised to come with you and they backed out. They had pressure and they didn't press. And so they'll still be unhappy next week and the week after that and the week after that and the week after that. 
that you pressed through whatever opposition you found, including traffic and everything else. And here you are, and you're going to have the fruit of it. Matthew 7, 13 and 14 talks to us about a narrow path and a broad path. But I'd like to read you what the Amplified Bible says about these verses. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and spacious and broad is the way that leads away to destruction. And many are those who are entering through it. Now, basically, the broad path is easy. You don't have to have any spiritual courage to travel on the broad path. On the broad path, you're going to have a lot of company. There won't be anything to press you, no pressure, no narrow places. There'll not only be room for you, but you and all your flesh. You can just be on that broad path and See, the truth of the matter is, is without spiritual maturity, we cannot enjoy the journey. We just can't. I didn't enjoy myself when I was trying to manipulate and control everybody, and I'd go to church on Sunday, and that was well and good. And You know, I knew about salvation by grace, but I wasn't enjoying my life when I was full of self-pity and got mad every time I didn't get my own way, when I wasn't living for anybody but me and didn't care really about anybody else. That, that's not... That's not real Christianity. I had religion, but I didn't have a real serious walk with God. And if you have a serious walk with God, then you're going to be willing to press through whatever you need to press through in order to have the result that you desire. But the gate is narrow, verse 14 says, and I love what the Amplified Bible says, contracted by pressure, and the way is straightened and compressed that leads away to life. And few are those who find it. I might as well just be honest with you and tell you that if you really want to be all that God wants you to be, you might as well expect opposition. But you know what? You don't need to have everything easy. You're anointed by the Holy Spirit for hard stuff. We are anointed by God for hard things. And we are more than conquerors. We can know before the battle ever begins that we're going to win it if we keep our eyes on Christ. Amen? The woman who had been bleeding for 18 years spent all that she had on doctors and was no better. She heard that Jesus was coming by. And the Bible says that she pressed through the crowd. Everybody said, leave him alone. Get out of here. Go back. Stay the way you are. But she pressed through the crowd to take hold of the hem of his garment. We have to press past the pain of feelings. I intend to teach about that tomorrow night, how we have to press past how we feel. We feel, we feel, we don't feel, we feel, we don't feel, we want, we think, we feel, we feel, we don't feel. <laughs> and we wish we felt, but we don't feel, and <laughs> on and on. And so, you need to make sure that you're here tomorrow night and bring everybody you know that's led by their feelings. Bring everybody you know that's an emotional mess and everybody that gets their feelings hurt easy and everybody that's been mad for the last 20 years over something that happened and let's just go ahead and get some victory in our life. Amen? There are many things we have to press past and each one of these could be a four-part series but I'm going to resist the temptation to preach on every one of them and just mention to you some of the things in life that you will have to press past. Rejection. When God called me into the ministry, I was rejected basically by everybody that I knew. I asked to leave my church, lost all my friends, and just was not an easy time. How simple it would have been to have given up, taken the easy road. But if I would have, I wouldn't be here today. 
you know what? I don't want to get to the end of my life and look back and say, I wish I would have, and I wonder what would have happened if I would have. I don't want to be old and just have regrets. I want to know that I stepped out in faith and tried what I believed that God was asking me to do and that I was bold and courageous and that I got the best that I could out of the life and the time that God had given me. Amen? <laughs> Betrayal, abandonment, unforgiveness, offense, self-pity. That was a hard one for me. Wanting revenge. It's hard, boy, when somebody hurts you and you'd love to get them back and God tells you to wait on Him. <laughs> to pray for them and go ahead and bless them. <laughs> Honey, let me tell you, that takes some pressing. <laughs> hard times, trials, troubles, self-centeredness, jealousy. Sometimes it takes a lot of pressing just to get through each day. Life can be pretty rough today. A lot of stress, very packed schedules, takes a lot of money to live. It's a little tough out there sometimes, and sometimes we get into periods of time where we just got to press through stuff. Pressing through the desire to give up, depression, discouragement, disappointment with people, disappointment with God. We have to be determined that we're not going to give up. Now, I could stand here and tell you stories all night from my own life about times when I had to press, but I'm just going to mention three things to you just so you can kind of identify and then you can kind of locate the own areas in your life right now that you're needing to press through because I can guarantee you that everybody in the building has something. Everybody here has something. Even though you may be in a really great time in your life right now, there's some area, something coming against you, some area where God is challenging you to grow and you're needing to press and not just give up. Obviously, you've heard my testimony probably if you've watched my program very much. I was sexually abused by my father for many, many years. My mother didn't know how to deal with it, so she just didn't. So I was hurt by him abused by him, abandoned by my mom, had a very rough upbringing, and then because of that, I had a lot of problems. Well, I married the first young man that came along knowing down deep in my heart it was the wrong thing to do, but I was afraid nobody would ever want me, so I was 18, he was 19, we got married, and it was a five-year nightmare. And then, at the end of that marriage, I had one child that I named David, after my brother, whose name was David, and then when he was nine months old, I met Dave, <laughs> You think God had a plan? <laughs> and uh, if Dave wouldn't have pressed through in those early years of our marriage, and I don't really know how many years it took before he felt like that staying married to me was worth it, but probably a lot. You know, I doubt that it was one or two. You know, I know the first three, four, five years were really, really rough, and then. I started trying to get a little bit better, but it was a slow go. I mean, it took a long time. And so I'm just thankful to Dave that he pressed through and he didn't give up and that he stuck with me all the way through to the finish. Amen? And so Dave and I now have been married 45 years. So that, that's a lot of sticking it out and pressing through. And I just want to encourage you, if if there's somebody in your life right now that you are just very tempted to give up on, don't give up just because it would be the most comfortable thing for you. Make sure that you go to God and say, God, do you want me to give up? Are you ready for me to turn my back on this person and walk away? I mean, I've even had people that have worked for me over the years that, man, I just wanted to give up on them, just like, Get out of here and go work somewhere else. <laughs> We're not running a nursery school here for Christians. <laughs> and I've had God on more than one occasion say, don't give up on them. Don't give up on them. And so we've pressed through and confronted issues and 
some of them have turned out to be some of our top leaders. You have no idea what God can do with somebody else if you will just stick with them and continue to be an example to them over a long period of time. You know what? We all want to be used by God, but do we really? I mean, do you really want a ministry? Come on, we beg God to show us what our ministry is and what is our calling, and we want to be used by God, and we want to lead people to Christ, but we don't really want to be around sinners. We don't really want to be around anybody that's uncomfortable. We don't really want to stick with anybody that doesn't just make us feel gooey and give us goosebumps all the time. And so we have to understand that as Christians, we've got to kind of brace up a little bit and, and get a little bit of spiritual strength and say, I'm going to go all the way through with God. I'm not here just to make myself happy. God will bless you and he'll take care of you. But there's going to be times when you're going to have to will it, be willing to be uncomfortable. Dave said in some of those early years of our marriage, he would go out and just sit in the car and just cry. Just cry. But he knew that God didn't want him to leave me. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I wasn't behaving that way on purpose. I was a wounded, hurt person. And I needed somebody not just to preach the gospel to me, but to live the gospel in front of me. Amen? So you can take that little encouragement and do whatever you want to with it. Some of you are probably disappointed because you thought you were going to come in here tonight and I was going to give you a good excuse to just get out of the situation you're in. <laughs> and you know, there are times when something can't be repaired, it can't be fixed. You know, I was divorced when I was 22 years old and it was a situation that could not be fixed. I was married to a guy that was just a thief and a criminal and he wouldn't work and I mean, it was just just a mess and I needed to get out of that situation. So there are times when you need to break off a friendship, there's times when you need to, to get out of a relationship, but we run away too easy. How many of you would at least give me that much tonight, that we run away too easy? What would happen if we would really start to do whatever's best for the other person? Uh-oh. That's all right, now don't leave, I won't stay on this all night, but you know, what would happen if we really just said, you know, God, I don't want to do what's best for me. Come on, now let's get this. I don't want to do what's best for me, God. I want to do, I want to be used by you. So I want to do what you want me to do, and I want to do what's best for the other person. Well, you know, it's not really best for the other person for you to let somebody disrespect you and abuse you and beat on you and things like that. But a lot of the reasons why we give up on relationships is just because we're uncomfortable. The other person is not making us feel gooey and giving us goosebumps. They're not making us happy. You don't make me happy anymore. Well, stop giving somebody else responsibility for your joy. Make yourself happy. Love you. Second example, you know, me confronting my issues rather than running away from them was not easy. And many of you have issues in your life. I talked with a woman last night, and she shared with me that my ministry, my testimony has really helped her begin to confront issues in her life. She said, I had the same kind of background that that you had, and you know, you can spend your whole life running away from things and blaming everybody else, or you can confront issues. And it takes pressing to do that. And every time you press through something, you, you build more faith muscles. You build more spiritual muscles. You get to know God better. You know, I've got some muscles in these arms up here, whether you know it or not. Check that out. And you know how I get those? Doing bench presses at the gym. I press and I get muscle. I do squats and I get muscle. I do lunges, I get muscle. <laughs> You're not gonna get muscle sitting around doing nothing except whining and wanting somebody else to solve all your problems. Well, today I've been speaking to you about pressing in and pressing on, and I know that sometimes that is not the most exciting thing to think about. 
but I want to encourage you that it is well worth it when you get to the other side of the things that you're dealing with now. I want to encourage you not to give up. There are new things that God is doing and He wants you to press into them. The enemy wants to hold you back in the past, but God wants you to press in to the new. Make a commitment that you're never going to quit and you're not going to give up. But I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and that He changes lives and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt? Door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer. Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. Early on, mom and dad, you know, really just started to realize just how full the Bible is with uh, mandates that we're supposed to take care of the poor. You know, it talks all the time about visiting those that are in prison and feeding the hungry and you know taking in the stranger and, and taking care of the widow and the orphan. And so we strive to do that. And as the ministry has grown, our, our ability to influence and do bigger things has also grown. You know, as we travel around the world, we meet so many wonderful children that have had such desperate need in their life. And we're so grateful to be able to help them. Today, we happen to be in Thailand. And this little boy's name is Somded. And he's had some tragic things in his life, but thank God, through your help, he's now living in the children's home here, and his life is looking very bright. His parents both died when he was six in an auto accident. And when they found him to bring him here to the home, he had had severe ear infections, which had caused hearing loss and lots of other problems in his ears. So he's had about two years of medical treatment on his ears, and thank God he can hear fine now. And so thank you for helping us provide homes for some dead and for other little boys and girls like him all around the world. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mens te boven. En misschien vraag je jezelf af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand. Het leven is te kort om te verspillen. Trek jezelf uit de sleur. Word actief en maak er iets van. Ontdek de bestemming voor jouw leven en wat God voor jou in petto heeft. Joyce Meyer heeft hierover een boek geschreven. Ik daag je uit. Ontdek, ga de uitdaging aan en bestel het boek via onze website joyce-meyer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Ga ook eens naar de Facebookpagina van Joyce Meyer Nederland. Like deze pagina en ontvang elke dag inspirerende uitspraken van Joyce op jouw Facebook. Open, direct en to the point. Kleine oases in je dagelijks leven. Lees mee, het is het waard. Alleen bij Joyce Meyer Nederland op Facebook.